Everyone knows that other galaxies are incredibly far away. At distances of millions of light years, it is obvious that we will not be visiting anytime soon. What many people don't realize, however, is that exploring the universe has a time limit. By the time we reach other distant galaxies, we could be nearing the heat death of the universe, where stars stop forming and burning, and there is nothing interesting left to explore. Additionally, as space itself continues to expand, more and more galaxies will start moving away from us faster than the speed of light, escaping our observable universe and disappearing forever. Now, as you will see in this video, the situation is much more optimistic than this. Travel to other galaxies is easier than you might think, and meeting advanced alien life in other galaxies could be the key to understanding the secrets of the universe. So make sure to like and subscribe, and let's get right into things. So the first thing we should mention about intergalactic space is that everything is relatively much closer packed together compared to interstellar space. So for stars, uh, compared to their radius, it might be millions, billions, and trillions times that distance to the next star. But for galaxies, for example, the Milky Way is 100,000 light years across, and then the Andromeda galaxy is only about 2 million light years away from it. Now, another thing to note is that galaxies are not orbiting anything necessarily, and so over long periods of time, most galaxies are getting pulled together and they're eventually going to merge. So scientists predict that the Andromeda galaxy is going to be colliding with the Milky Way in around 5 billion years. So to travel to another galaxy, of course, we could just wait until this happens in 5 billion years. But the point of this video is not that. It's to actually travel to other galaxies. So let's just ignore that for now. Now, another point for this video is that we're not going to be using the idea of a warp drive or wormholes or any of these theoretical concepts that are not proven to work with our understanding of physics and technology. So I really recommend this video by this channel Cool Worlds, and he explains all the physics problems with something like a warp drive or an Alcubierre drive. And the most important thing is that it requires much too much energy. In this example, he said it would take a few solar masses just to produce this kind of gravitational field. And it would also cause time travel and uh, radiation and all sorts of other issues that make it basically impossible. But with our known technology of just nuclear reactors or even fusion reactors, fission reactors, and electric ion thrusters, it's possible to get to these kind of intergalactic speeds anyway. So in the last video, we sort of explained the upper limit of the sort of generation ship that you could build with a single solar system. And using the entire resources of a planet of Earth, for example, if you used all of the water on Earth, and given that you had enough solar energy, then you could produce a large ship with around 2,000 kilometers per second of delta V. And so if you had to also stop at another solar system, this would be 0 0.0032. But if you uh, just want to see the maximum acceleration you could get, it's around 0 0.0064 light years per year. Okay, so not quite relativistic speeds. Okay, and if we account for the escape velocity of escaping the galaxy, we're looking around 0 0.0061 light years per year as a maximum when you're just using just one solar system and doing a very basic acceleration. Now, even at this speed, it is theoretically possible to travel to other galaxies. However, you can see here, even in our local group, our local cluster of galaxies, it takes 1.6 billion years just to go around 10 million light years. And so this is sort of unfeasible, um, especially if we want to go to very distant galaxies that are very interesting ones. So what we can do to go faster is use something called the Oberth effect and also gravity assists. And we're basically going to be using the acceleration and the gravity fields of the objects in our galaxy to make us go faster. Now in this example, we show a gravity assist with Jupiter. But of course, in the galactic context, you can use stars or, of course, black holes as gravity assists. Because a gravity assist is mainly limited by the gravitational field of the object you are using. And so if you're using a black hole, which can accelerate you to relativistic speeds, it's going to be much more effective. A gravity assist is also limited by how fast the object is orbiting, in most cases, a star. Okay, So Jupiter, for example, is only orbiting the sun at around in the 10,000 of meters per second range, okay? However, if we use a gravity assist of planets and a star that's orbiting a black hole, and then you could even use an Oberth effect on the black hole itself, 
which can accelerate you to relativistic speeds, then it becomes a lot more interesting. So we actually see this happening naturally in galaxies with stars. So stars will actually have these interactions and they can get launched out of a galaxy on their own uh, from a supermassive black hole. So it usually happens in these triple star systems and binary star systems when there's these weird gravitational interactions. And eventually you can have these stars get launched out on their own. So we could do the same thing and plan it very meticulously so that it works very well for a small spaceship. And of course we could ride these stars on their own, but they're not going uh, quite as fast as we might want. So the best candidate to make this work in reality is to use the star that orbits closest to our supermassive black hole in the center of the Milky Way called S2 orbiting our black hole, Sagittarius A star. So just like we would do a gravity assist with Mars or Jupiter that's orbiting the sun to escape the solar system, we're going to be doing a gravity assist with this star to escape our galaxy. Okay, so this star orbits the black hole at around 7,000 kilometers per second, which is 3% of the speed of light. And so this is sort of the upper limit of how much acceleration we're going to be able to receive through this gravity assist. And you can actually get more by accelerating on your own in the gravitational field using the Oberth effect. So the way that we're going to pull this off is, first of all, we're going to cancel all of our relative motion to the black hole. Now, this would be most efficient out at the edge of the galaxy, but you could do this much closer as well. It would just require slightly more acceleration. And because of dark matter, it doesn't matter that much where you do it. Okay? So when we cancel out our relative acceleration, we're going to still keep a tiny amount so that we don't fall directly into the black hole itself. Okay, but this is going to set us on an elliptical orbit like we already are, but this is going to send us right past uh, that star that's orbiting the black hole and eventually right past the black hole itself if we really want to get the maximum acceleration possible. Now, what this was going to do, we're going to do our first burn. We're going to fall nearly into the black hole. Then we're going to do a gravity assist with that star that's orbiting the black hole. And then we can even pass very close to the Sagittarius A star and perform a burn. And that's going to give us much more acceleration intergalactically than it would if we just left from somewhere like the sun. Okay, and this is going to end up giving us thousands of kilometers per second in acceleration. And it's going to give us on the ballpark of 0.03 and it could be even more if we time everything perfectly and use tons of acceleration. Now, we could also do this at a black hole, but in this case, we likely wouldn't be able to get the same levels of acceleration, especially if there's no star orbiting the black hole that we could use as a gravity assist. But this is an option if we're not super concerned with how fast we're going and we just want to leave. We could just do an Oberth burn at a black hole, or even a star for that matter. Now, as far as slowing down, we're going to need to save roughly half of our delta V, our chemical and ion electrical delta V, that is, because we're going to need to do the same thing when we reach whatever galaxy it is. Okay, so we're going to either need to find another supermassive black hole, and we're going to need to perform the entire operation, but in reverse. So a gravity assist can accelerate you out of a galaxy, but it can also decelerate you into the gravitational field of a galaxy as well. And you can also perform burns to slow yourself down, and it'll have the same effect. Now, at this much faster speed, we're going to be traveling at a much more reasonable pace through the universe. Okay, so in our local cluster here, you can see that it only takes 300 million years to get to these other even distant galaxies. Okay, and in our sort of super cluster, uh, we can go all the way to Virgo, in around 3 billion years. Now, 3 billion years is a long time, but we're still going to have a similar rate of star formation, and it's not like the universe is going to be ending anytime soon in 3 billion years. Okay, now, a 300 million year trip is obviously unfeasible for the kind of generation ships that we've talked about in the last few episodes. So what we're going to need to do is either uh, have a much more massive ship, number one, or number two, even at that uh, size, it's still unfeasible to have something like hundreds or thousands of humans over 300 millions of years, and it's simply not possible to bring enough fusion and fission fuel to make this work. So we can have a ship that's much smaller, and maybe we don't have any living humans. We could just have frozen humans or 
eggs and sperm and then sort of regenerate them every once in a while just to keep it going. And then we can uh, uh, regenerate the humans when we get to the next galaxy. Or we could just give up on trying to build a ship entirely and we could just ride a star that's uh, leaving that solar system. So we do have these hypervelocity stars that get to similar accelerations as what we might want from uh, that kind of gravity assist or what's possible to just accelerate from somewhere like the sun with. Okay, so we could ride a star that's going roughly 2,000 kilometers per second. And again, we probably have to wait hundreds of million years to find a good candidate for this. Okay, however, once we find the right one, we could just uh, go around the star and that would provide us energy and resources uh, for billions of years while we wait to reach the next galaxy. But of course, there's a limit to how many other galaxies we can get to. Okay, so as space expands, faster and faster even, more and more galaxies will leave the observable universe and they'll also leave the universe that we can get to. Okay, so you can see the observable universe here at 46 billion light years. And the observable universe is where you'll have light that will reach us, but it doesn't necessarily mean we can ever get there. That smaller region, which is marked in purple there, is the region that we could get to if it were possible to travel at the speed of light. And this is actually smaller than the observable universe. Okay, but of course, it's only possible to get to small fractions, maybe 0.1 or less of the speed of light for a large spaceship that could carry uh, humans or human embryos or something like this. And so we're really going to be limited to a certain region of the universe and all of the other galaxies beyond that. And there's even, you know, billions that are already beyond it right now we'll never be able to communicate with unless we find something like wormholes or something that could break the laws of physics, which who knows could be possible in billions of years. Now, the real question is, is it worth it to even leave the galaxy? We have billions of stars in our own, and so we could probably solve most of our problems by just hanging out in the Milky Way. So this is really what ends up being the key question. We know that intergalactic travel is possible, but the question is, should we do it? And are there actual reasons to go for it? Well, I think number one, the most important reason is searching for alien life. So our civilization has only been around for thousands of years. And in the future, it'll only be around for maybe millions or hundreds of millions of years. So by traveling to other galaxies, we could end up finding life that's existed for billions of years, and that's already solved all of the mysteries of the universe, and we can basically learn things from them. And uh, yeah, there's all sorts of possibilities as far as discovering aliens. Now, the other issue is that while there's billions of stars in the galaxy, at some point, we're going to start running out of resources, either because they've used up or just because they're limited uh, based on the number of stars, okay? So by going to other galaxies, we can basically do the same thing we're doing in our galaxy, and it's basically just an infinite universe out there that we can go explore and, you know, use for our civilization, okay? The next point is just the idea of when we've actually fully used up all the resources and we basically have increased the entropy of that region or just increased on its own and all the stars have burned out, there might be pockets of the universe or certain galaxies that basically have younger stars and they have more of these uh, dust formations and things that can keep continuing to forming stars for billions of years after certain galaxies like the Milky Way have sort of burnt out. So this is sort of like another uh, last vestige uh, for civilization that we can hope for, for at least maybe a billion or uh, a few trillion years even. Um, if you want to live around red dwarfs or blue dwarfs or things like that. Okay. Now the final point is just uh, this idea of exploration and like kind of science. So there's sort of these rare events of maybe like neutron star collisions or supermassive black holes that are colliding uh, and things like this. And these might only be possible to observe and do experiments on and things like this in very distant galaxies. And it might also just be interesting to go explore uh, distant galaxies and see what's there and whatever kind of scientific uh, discoveries that we might find. Okay, so yeah, I think exploring to other galaxies is probably worth it. And it's sort of just a natural step once we've uh, fully colonized the entire Milky Way. Uh, but let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, you might think this is a total pipe dream or, you know, whatever it might be. And with that being said, thanks for watching. And make sure to like and subscribe and share. And with that being said, have a great day.